from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Beer maker South African Breweries and its parent company AB InBev Africa have announced that in the lead up to being 100% renewable by 2025, all its breweries across South Africa will soon have solar facilities installed. Simone Litka tells us more. AB InBev and SAV Procurement and Sustainability VP Taryn Rose Kelly started off by giving Engineering News and Mining Weekly a bit of insight into the company's plans for 2020 in the lead up to its renewable energy goal. For 2020, we want to have all of our on site um, uh, on-site installations completed, so with solar energy on our roofs. This should power between 10 and 15% of each of our sites' electricity. Uh, we're also looking at, um, I don't know if you're interested outside of South Africa, but in Nigeria we're looking at a, a gas to power line, uh, which will power 100% of our brewery. So in Nigeria we run off uh, diesel generators almost 100% of the time, and so this will significantly reduce our carbon uh, emissions in, in Nigeria as well. Um, and then in South Africa we're also looking at partnering with ESCOM. Uh, there's twofold, so the one requirement is that ESCOM would need us to take 40% of our electricity from them. Um, and so in order for us to meet our 100% renewable energy target, Target, we need that to be through renewable energy sources um, and so we're partnering with ESCOM to get access to their solar and wind power plants um, at the moment. Then in terms of the rest of the power that we need to fill the gap, uh, we need off-site uh, solar to be allowed to be wheeled through the ESCOM grid to each of our breweries uh, and that's one of the legislation pieces that we're trying to work on at the moment to get that approved. Once we get it approved it's relatively quick to install so a maximum of a 12 month period from start to to finish. We've already got everything in place for us to be able to do it, we just need the regulation. Rose Kelly further gives us some indication as to whether or not the company is on track to meet the goals that are set out for itself. So yes we are at the moment, um, but there is, a, there is a dependency on government for policy to be changed to allow us to meet 100% of our renewable energy. And so we are um, starting to take up talks with the different municipalities to allow wheeling, as well as with government itself in terms of a program that can be done for private sector companies in ESA. Engineering News and Mining Weekly was invited to the showcasing of vehicle manufacturer Fuso's electric truck, which is where the conversation with Rose Kelly took place. She tells us a bit more about the truck, which is an example of how companies and private users could support state-owned ESCOM and the power grid. The electric truck here today is more for marketing purposes, so we're trying to raise awareness around the need for an electric truck in South Africa. Um, at the moment we need legislation also um, to allow us to drive it on the, on the roads, um, and so Fuso is busy working on that with the Departments of Trade and Industry and the fact that they need to bring in um, a test vehicle for us to be able to use. Once we get that, we then want to be able to do a few test deliveries to be able to check if, the, if it's possible um, and also whether it's possible within the constraints of an electrical charging grid within South Africa. Um, and I, my dream is to have it done by 2022. So we're planning on working with uh, Fuso and any other partners to try and determine whether we're going to be able to do that or not. According to Fuso South Africa head Ziad Gaba, the truck provides increasing insights into the transition to a low carbon future. The truck, called the Fuso e Canter, is charged using renewable energy generated at SAB and has a carrying capacity of up to 3.5 tonnes. A single charge allows for an operating range of between 100 and 120 kilometres at optimal conditions. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.